Welcome today. We're going to go ahead and talk about the four ways money is made in real estate. I reference this in a lot of my other videos. Um, hey, here's how money is made in real estate and we go over those briefly. I just want to go really in depth of how money is made here and the different, the different ways that's structured. And then I'll use this video as well to reference back to. Um, that way I don't have to spend that much time talking about it in my other videos. So this is an important one and it's, it really is a base of everything else that I've done. A lot of folks just say, oh yeah, just look at a cap rate, which is the capitalization rate, and then we can go into that a little deeper. Or, oh yes, we'll just see your basic cash flow, or whatever, they'll say a bunch of funny things like that. But you have to you have to see the whole picture for real estate to make sense, right? And folks don't just talk about stocks and just say, oh yeah, the only thing important in stocks is the dividends that you make. No, I mean, you have to look at the, the potential that the stocks have to raise up in value and the different ways to make money in real estate. So this is what this video is about, and we'll jump right on it. So number one is appreciation. Excuse my handwriting, but it's there. <laughs> so we're gonna go into it. Appreciation is essentially the difference of how much the, the value is going up, right? So say I buy a house for $300,000, it goes up, let's just use last year's numbers, 2019. Um, on average, what the average appreciation was throughout the year, based on a couple of different stats that were pulled by the MLS, is it's about it was about seven percent is what it went up, which was more than I thought it was going to end up being this year. But that's about about what it went up uh, between seven and eight percent. So last year, December two thousand eighteen, if I would have bought X Y Z home, um, three hundred thousand on average this year, it'd be worth about three hundred and twenty between 320 and 325 is what is what it went up on average. So appreciation is, is in my opinion, one of the most important ways money is made in real estate, especially here in Utah, Salt Lake, Weaver, Davis County. I predict, I mean, not just what I predict, but there's a lot of predictions that Utah County especially is gonna double within the next 25 years. So what that means is basic supply and demand if the population doubles, um, housing prices are going to continue to go up there. Uh, nationwide average is about 4%. Utah, we tend to do a little bit better than that. But that's essentially one of the most important ways that money is made through appreciation. And this is why I think it's so important is because that's where, I mean, leverage is huge. I preach a lot about, you know, buying a house, living there a year, moving, buying a house, living there, moving, because you can buy a house with relatively low money down. Say someone who would have done a 3% conventional on this theoretic $300,000 house, they would have put in $9,000 into it, and then they would have paid out what they would have paid for rent anywhere else. It's pretty, it's pretty comparable. But just on appreciation alone, by the following year, that has gone up to $21,000, just assuming the, four, the 7% that we were using earlier for the appreciation. So that not only went up that much, that's a good chunk of change. It more than doubled, your initial investment more than doubled in just one year. So that's why I think real estate is absolutely phenomenal because you can go in and leverage it out that way. And then the more properties you have doing it that way, the more this number goes up. So that's one really big one. I could spend a long time talking about this and why I think it's so important. But just to be very basic, it's essentially how much that house is going up. And it's also compound appreciation. So next year, right, this went up to 321. Let's say next year we have another 7%, which Zillow uh, is predicting about 8% is what they're predicting. Um, I honestly think we'll be in a more normal market, we'll be around 4%. But let's just say we go with the 7% um, because we're using that same number. So that not only goes up another 21,000, it's also the seven percent of that uh, that additional twenty one thousand. It's compound interest, so that ends up being an additional fourteen hundred that's added onto there, which is again why I think real estate is is absolutely incredible, and appreciation is one of the most attractive things in real estate. Uh, some folks don't talk about that that as much as they talk about cash flow, um, which again it depends on how you're looking to invest and how you're looking to do real estate but appreciation is definitely something that you want to keep keep in mind 
And using that again, that same scenario of that $300,000 house, we're going to talk about the second way you make money in real estate. It's your debt pay down, right? So obviously we all know how that in the beginning of the loan, the majority of what you're paying down is interest. But on a $300,000 house, very, very conservatively, and this, this number can vary so much, but I'm just going to be very conservative for this situation. I'm just going to say $4,000 is how much... Not 400K, just $4,000. $4,000 is what's paid down from how much you owe on the house, right? So in that scenario, $300,000 house, we went in with 3% down, that's $9,000. On that $9,000, how much I have paid into the house essentially, now goes to 13,000. And just on debt payoff alone, that's almost a 50% increase. I mean, it's a little bit less than that, but it's almost 50% increase. So that's, and again, the longer you own the home, the more that that, that ends up scaling up. Anyway, I'll, I'll graph it out real quick. In the beginning of the loan, how much you're paying for interest is very, very high, and then it ends up going down. And then as time goes forward, how much you're actually paying on the house and how much is going to principal is the opposite. It's down and down and down and it ends up scaling up. So that's the way it ends up working with the debt pay down. By the end of the, at the end of the term, usually you're looking at a 30-year AM if you end up going out that long, a 30-year amortization schedule is what it's called. So by the end of that period, almost everything that you're paying, say your monthly payment is, I don't know, $1,600, $1,500, almost all that is going directly to the principal itself. So that pay down by year 30, year 29, um, it's almost 100%. So 15 times 12, so that's $18,000 essentially that's paid off near the end. So that number goes from 4,000 to 18. The longer you have the home, the more is, is taken out of that debt pay down. So that's a very important number to know as you're looking and analyzing properties is how much is being paid off of your mortgage. Because at the end of the day, whether you go in and resell it or, um, or you're looking to do a cash out refinance or something like that, how much money you've paid off on the property is an important number to know. So that's the second way money is made through real estate. Now let's look at number three. And there's no particular order on these, but cash flow is, is one that anyone and everyone talks about. And to be honest, a lot of people calculate that inaccurately. They say, okay, cool, my mortgage is $1,000 and then I'm renting the place for $1,200. So my cash flow is $200. First off, that is that is not correct. And if that's how you're looking to buy properties, that's you're analyzing analyzing them incorrectly. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on how how to calculate your cash flow in this video. Uh, we'll talk about it in another video. But essentially, is your is your revenue right minus your expenses? So if rent is let's say $1,200, and then your expenses all in all are $1,000, then you do have your $200 cash flow. And expenses, you want to factor in your maintenance fees, whether you're having a property manager manage it, you want to met those management fees associated with it. Um, you want to factor in your vacancy rates and all those different numbers. You can, it's really on a case by case basis, depending on the property. And then again, we'll talk about those numbers and how they're, how you find them all. But essentially you want to factor all those into it and your mortgage into whatever that number is, right? For this situation, it's $1,000, but it's 200, uh, is what your cash flow ends up being. 200 a month over a year ends up being $2,400 that year. So, right? That's another way that money is being made in real estate is through that cash flow. And uh, just one more thing before I move on to the next point. The reason cash flow is talked about so much and it should be talked about a lot is because that's, it really is the health of a property, right? So if your expenses are 1500 but you're only getting 1200 for rent, then you need, to, you, you need to be making out the difference of that $300 a month. And for some people that's a lot, for some people that's a little. But regardless, you never know what shifts the market is going to take and how that's going to affect you. Honestly, in real estate, I view it as a long-term game and most everything that I talk about is playing it out long-term. 
But if you're if you're shooting yourself short term, even for that long term gain, it's it's a dangerous move to make because you're over leveraging yourself. So if there is any shifts in the market, you don't have enough money either set aside to cover all this difference or to cover, hey, there's that difference that I'm paying out constantly. And then all of a sudden my furnace and my water heater went out. So then that's a huge expense that you have to go in and pay out of pocket to fix that and make sure that you're good to go. So this is why cash flow is very, very important, is it's to make sure that your, your property is healthy, you have a healthy amount of money that you're setting aside for a rainy day or anything that can come up there. Um, or, you know, X, Y, Z happens, I don't have $300 extra, that's fine because the property is paying for itself and then a little bit more. Um, that's honestly the best way I think to, to look at cash flow is you wanna make sure it's positive and it's gonna take care of itself over time. But most people talk about how to get it rich through your cash flow and there are ways to do it but as long as it's positive then you're in a pretty good spot item number four and i'm not going to get incredibly creative about this we did a video not too long ago with uh, john edwards he's a strategic tax accountant but and we talked about it a little bit more there but i'm just going to be very very basic on some of the big ones that you can do Again, you can be very, very creative on this, and maybe we'll do another video going in super deep on it. But essentially, number four that you're looking at is your tax benefits. So the number one that we talked about is the amount of interest that you're paying. As we said, as the, the loan matures, you end up paying less on interest, and then more goes toward principal. But especially in the beginning, you're paying a lot on your interest there, and that's a tax write-off. And then the other one that you have that's very important is your, um, it's essentially, it's called depreciation. So even though we talked about the first way that money is made through real estate is appreciation, which is the opposite of depreciation, the property, the house itself, the, not the land, you can't depreciate land, but the house itself is depreciating, right? There's wear and tear associated with it, X, Y, Z. So you get to write off depreciation. And each property, it really depends on what you're doing there. And I would recommend talking to an accountant um, on how to calculate these correctly for your property. But these are two other ways, the tax benefits that you get through owning real estate. And there's so much more that you can do there as far as, I mean, owning your own property management company and company, right? You're owning it and you have it set up there. And then the travel that you have to do to, to these, you can write that off as well and then you can write off some of the maintenance associated with it. Like there's a lot of ways you can get into it, but these are the two big ones that not a lot of folks go super deep on, but that you should be aware of. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that good for these four ways. So again, to talk about it one more time, that's appreciation, it's your debt pay down, it's your cash flow, and it's your tax benefits. If you have any questions on these, feel free to reach out and we can go over them more I guess more deeply and if you have any specific questions on hey well, my property is XYZ how much do you believe it's appreciated uh, my property is XYZ can you see how much I've paid down can we look at my amortization schedule or whatever your questions are feel free to reach out I'm happy to go over those and we can we can talk about it and see what's going to be the best setup for you well I hope this video has gone over and helped you see a couple different ways that money is made through real estate and realize that it's not just a one-dimensional game it's there's at least four very solid pillars on how real estate is made. You can be creative and find other ways to make money in real estate, but those are some of the four main ones. Um, and again, I just want to run over that scenario real quick on a $300,000 property and then talk about how that money in this scenario made did, how, how it ended up doing, right? So we said they did $9,000. I always put a K back there, that's incorrect. $9,000 is what they ended up paying out uh, for their down payment. Let's say that the closing costs were incorporated into the loan. We could talk about that and if you guys want to see how that's structured, feel free to give me a call and we can go over that. It's pretty simple. But they ended up paying $9,000 out of pocket, right? And that was their initial investment. And then off of how they made money, one, two, and three, let's go ahead and say, let's use the actual numbers, right? And in that property, it's pretty close to they bought it 2018, December 2018, today, um, end of December 2019, this one went up $21,000, 7%, which is a lot. And it's not super normal, it doesn't happen all the time, 
Um, what is normal is more like 4%, which would be about 12,000. But it was a good year for appreciation, so we're gonna use those actual numbers. And your debt pay down, it'll be about $4,000, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but we'll leave it at 4,000. And then your cash flow, in this scenario, you were living in there, so zero dollars, zero K. Um, let's just say your break even point, right? And then if you rented it out, say you, your cash flow covers just enough to pay for your expenses um, and everything associated there. So we won't even include cash flow there. Your tax benefits, this one varies so, 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 so much just based off of how much, what tax brackets you're in, what other real estate you have, how much you're planning on depreciating. There's, there's a lot that you can go into that, but let's just say $1,000 for the sake of simple math. So based off of that situation, we're at 26,000. That was made in that one year. Their initial investment was $9,000. That $9,000 turned into really, that $9,000 is still there. So it's 35K that was generated through that property. Most of that money stays in the property and it's building up there. And I typically recommend leave that there and then let it take care of itself. But that's that's your essentially return that you have on your, your return on your investment with that one property. And these are very, very conservative numbers, to be honest. This number is a little bit high, I mean, historically speaking, but last year that's how it ended up playing out in real in real terms. So this is a little going over the lab, the four methods that money's made through real estate and what they actually look like. I hope this video is beneficial to you. Again, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to go over those with you. Thanks. Bye.